full room. Yeah. It sounds like this talk is going to be something exciting that we can talk about today. Uh, my idea is uh, to to help you grow your business with content marketing. That's my idea. That's what I want you to have as a good insight when you come and leave this room after this session. Uh, my name is Sarah Watts. I run the agency PixPro in <laughs> Stockholm. We're digital agencies. We do a lot of content marketing, digital marketing, marketing automation, and we do a lot of Joomla stuff. And we also do extensions for Joomla. I've been volunteering to do Joomla projects since Joomla started. First, I started in Sweden, local, helping out in the Joomla groups. We had a association for Joomla. I've been speaking to a lot of events during the years. And for the past three years, I've been the president of Joomla. And I've seen a lot of our ecosystem companies in Joomla struggling sometimes because you can't grow or you can't get the, the uh, the money you want to have for your worth, right? So that's why I also have been initiated to the Joomla certification program because I think that is something that actually can boost our prices a little bit. So if you're joining the program for certification this at this event, I think that would be awesome. Um, I also do a lot of uh, speaking in uh, schools. And I do that for a lot of reasons, but because it's for me to give back to the next generation of developers and marketers. I think that content marketing is something that we think is really, really hard. Do you do a lot of content marketing? No? no some? Yes, yes, okay. but, but uh, majorly for, for some companies that have for kettlebell training. Okay. So there's a lot of content marketing where you yeah. So can we? Can you please raise your hand? Do you run a business where you like produce Joomla websites for your clients? Okay. Do you offer content to that website as well, and not just the technical stuff? Yeah. Okay. Very few. Very few. Most people say, "Oh, I, I will deliver the content," and that never happens. Oh. <laughs> I spoke to so many people at breakfast this morning and said the same thing. We deliver awesome website that looks really, really good. They are responsive, they work, they are search engine optimized in the technology way. But when it comes to content and search engine optimization of the text, the client think that we don't get to know their business as much as they do, so they want to create their own content. And that's a big mistake that they make. And we are allowing them to do that. We are allowing them to do that. The website is actually not just the technology part, it's the messaging, it's the, uh, the wording, and if they say that my website is not visible in Google searches, it's usually not your fault. Joomla is really, really good to search and compensation, but it actually comes down to the content. If Google can't find anything on the website that actually matches the content, they will not be shown, right? And sometimes we think that this is an easy part for them to do. But it's not, because we trust them that they're going to deliver on time, but they don't. And then we're late in our project, and it holds us up for actually delivering other things to our other clients. So I think that that is something that I want to change. But I do want to like just point out that I think there is so much content out there that is just mediocre. We don't need more content. We need, we need awesome content. And I think the problem sometimes when we talk about content marketing, we talk about loads and loads of content. We need to blog every day. We have to do social media posts every day. We have to do this and this. We don't. We just have to do it right and think about it strategically. And if you can teach your clients to provide you with the right content, they can actually do some of the content creation. But you also have to teach them how to. So my idea is to tell you a little bit how we do things in our business so you can find a way of doing a replica for yourself. And I, in the end of the, se the seminar, I also have a website where you can go in and put your name and phone number and your email address in and you can have templates sent to you with great content so you can be more template-wise and give that to your client to gather the content better for yourself. My point is that 
we should not just create content for the sake of content creation. We need to figure out why are we doing this content. And the strategic way of thinking of it is usually that you have a product or service that you want to sell, or you have an idea that you want to sell. So if you think about it, if you are volunteering to Joomla, you might have an idea that you want to change something. That's your end goal in mind, right? Then if you think backwards and say, okay, maybe I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this, and this is my starting point. So think about the end in mind. And be very strategic when it comes to how you're going to measure how that works. A lot of those people that I have in contact with that has problems with content creation and getting paid to do that for their clients is usually because their clients don't see the value in that service. They look to you for the website but not for the content. And when you can say that I have a partner that can create content for you or I have an agency resource that can make your content, they might feel like, oh, I don't want to pay for that. But you can get paid for it if you can show them the results. So, I'm going to showcase how we sell our Joomla services in Sweden. The first thing we decide every single time when we look at content, we think about what are we going to sell? What are we going to provide? So in this sense, I want to provide Joomla services for the Swedish market. And I want them to go to this page where we explain more about our Joomla services and how they can sign up for having a discovery call with someone else and talking about we can, how we can help them. So the starting point is to develop an avatar. Do you have a collector? good sense of how your ideal customer is. Yeah? So what is your ideal customer? Um, my ideal customer is um, um, they want to learn how to um, maintain a Joomla website. Hmm. So it's about training. Okay. So you have the solution that you sell to them in mind. Yes. You're teaching them and learning them how to maintain their web, Joomla website. Yeah. Okay. But the avatar is not that. It's not the value that you create. So, so a diff different avatar um, for, for strength training. Um, targeting a well-educated group that knows that you will only be able to perform in the future good if he takes care of his body and is willing to put on work to do it and change his lifestyle. Hmm. Good. Because Which a lot narrows of people, it very down. Yeah. And who's willing to spend far more money on it than just attending to, to a gym. Yeah. So I think that's the key, that if we provide a service, some avatars, they just want to have that delivered to them and they just want to pay for it. They don't want to learn, they don't want to be involved, they just want to have the money done. And some people want to put in the work, they have a paycheck for you, they will be happy to collaborate with you to create something. Uh, and I think that the idea of an avatar, most people talk about the demographics, like, oh, they should be living in this city, they should earn this much money, they should be male or female, they should be in this year, uh, age group, or, Maybe they have this kind of title, that's demographics. And I can tell you that that is important if you're going to do retargeting on Facebook and you're going to figure out all this stuff when you're going to make your audience. But for content marketing, it's not. Content marketing needs to be something that attracts that person. What is the conversation that goes on in their head right now? And where are they in their customer journey? So if you think about the avatar, you should know your avatar as good as you know your best friend. You should know when they wake up in the morning. What is the first thing they look at in the morning? Is it Instagram or is it Facebook? Uh, if they are looking into uh, Twitter at all, what happens during their day? What is their biggest pain point that they want to solve? Is it the editor and Joomla that's not working out right for them because they mess it up all the time? Or is it 
What is it that is their biggest pain point? If you can figure that out and be very clear on that, it's going to be easy for you to create the right content for them. Think about what they search for in Google when they search. Is it how to not have crappy things in my email? Or is it going to be, I need to have the editor replaced because it doesn't work for me because I copy paste things from Word all the time and get all the, the coding wrong? What is it? So, basic question, how can I add value to potential customers? Yeah. And you have to think about how to how to solve the problem. First, you have to understand the problem so they understand that you understand them. And then you have to say, if you have this problem, here's the solution. And you have to tell them how to get that solution. So, we look at the destination. Where would they like to be? Where are they right now? And where do they want to be? So if you look at it from a point of view, I'm thinking right now an avatar that is a Joomla user that wants to go up to 3.7. They had 3.3 maybe before, and they saw that all the custom fields were coming in. Something else that was like really exciting for them to have a really good reason for them to upgrade. They are here right now and thinking, how should I change what is the implication of me upgrading? What is the new things that I can add on as value to my visitors based on the new functionality in 3.7? What can I do that is going to be easier for me as an admin or a moderator of the website that's going to change the time consumption or the security on my website? That's where they are in their place. That's all the conversation that's going on in their head right now. And my demographics are usually in Sweden for the service. We do have global clients, but mainly in Sweden. So I want to know all the stuff that's going on to their heads. And the easiest way to, for me to get that information is talking to my existing clients and asking them, what has prevented you to go there to upgrade? What is it that you are thinking of that needs to be resolved for you to come to this destination of actually having an upgraded on the website and they will tell you so you don't have to guess and come do a lot of content marketing that does not give you any good results don't talk about features in Joomla talk about the value of using the features that was my big takeaway when I was talking to my clients. They said, oh, it's nice that we have custom fields, but if I don't know how to make them, what to use them for, really good cases, then I, I don't get it. So think of how to take this current place so they can see them moving from the current place to the next place. So we started brainstorming in our office and thinking about all these things about our avatar, the need of security, the need of having the upgrade done. But what are they going to look for? What are they going to search for? And we realized that Joomla needs to have something not just text-based, but also video-based. So we created news videos, like three to six minutes about the biggest features that we saw would be beneficial for our user base for the upgrade. So we did a series of videos that we posted on Facebook and we posted <coughs> them on YouTube. And we made sure that we had all the keywords in place to make sure that they were searchable and foundable. We reused that content that's my key point. You reuse and repurpose your content. You don't have to think about doing one, just one thing. We're reusing it as much as you can. So what we did was actually embed the YouTube video in a blog post and making sure that we wrote the blog post in a sense of using all the keywords that were really exceptionally good for finding that article. And if you have access to yes English markets that's nice because then you don't have to do these videos yourself you can embed the Joomla videos that they already created for us 
But if you have your user base in a different native language, it's always easier to understand everything natively. So I would suggest you to look at the videos that Joomla has, repurpose the content and do it yourself. The blog post, also we did one collected blog post to have internal links in our website to every single one of the videos that had each and every one of them a known blog post. So they were cross-linked. And that bumps up our SEO ratio. We added the videos, as I said, to YouTube to be searched there. Most people go to YouTube to search for content when it comes to educational content, and they search for how-to. So think about what is your how-to for your clients. And then we posted it on Facebook as well. And we cross-posted and it was shared by the community, which is great. You want to have something really valuable that other people find value in, and they find so much value in it, so they want to share it to others. And you don't have to pay for that reach. <coughs> this video got like 4,000 impressions just within a couple of hours. And we don't have a big user base and a lot of followers. But Facebook has decided to push video have you realized how much video you see? Yeah, it's intentional. YouTube decided, no, Facebook decided to be the new YouTube in that sense. Uh, Facebook wants us to spend all our time on Facebook. And I'm going to have a session about how you can utilize Facebook separately on, on Sunday. How soon after the release of uh, 3.7 did you publish this video? We did a month before. A month before. Yeah, we do it. We do, we do crazy stuff. Like we do alpha bit, uh, webinars, and you say, "Hey, here's like I know you, you don't download your alpha. We download it, and we're gonna showcase it for you. This is the state right now. This is what we feel is important for you to know." Then we do the same thing for a beta. So this is actually based on a beta version, and we say, "This is how it looks like right now. We can't promise this is gonna be in the release, but if it is, awesome." So we did actually one on the router that was not, was pushed to 3.8. Uh, but then again, we have content now, so we can repurpose it when it's done. But the kind of the idea for us is to boost the interest of Joomla coming. So people don't say, hey, there's a new version of Joomla. Oh, I didn't know, what is that? So they should know, we educate our clients to be as good clients as possible. So they feel like we are the source experts for them. And that they feel like, we know what we're talking about. We're not just going to do this the day we got it, hands on the, the information, but we actually have been playing around with it and we have been doing some really good cases on an early release. Mm -hmm. So they trust us because it's always about know, like, and trust. And that's what content marketing can build for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back. We created videos, we created blog posts. And we did some social media activities by posting them on our social media channels. But that's not it, only. We need to rethink how we use social media. In every single video, we have so many good nuggets of golden information that we could take the whole script and just take bits and pieces like quotes and put them into social media. Going back to the blog post. We did a lot of like maybe 30 different social media posts for every single blog post and every single video. So something points into an interest somewhere that, oh, that's something that I want to know about. Then there is a different kind of, not different avatar, but it's like a version of the same avatar that we're looking for something else and they look for that word. So think of how you can repurpose your content over and over again by doing something we call splinters. We did a video and then we did a blog post. We have a lot of information. We can take all these bits and pieces and we do them like scattering on social media. That means that we don't repeat the same message all the time, but the same value base is trying to tap into the same post. 
see that you can do this in a couple of hours instead of doing this in a couple of days because you already have the content. You don't have to repurpose things indefinitely, but do it as much as you can. And then you should schedule it. So as you said, like when did you post these videos? We posted them a month ahead. But before that, we have done a content plan. So we know we don't want to give all the videos the same time. We don't want to post them in blogs at the same time. So we use our, our own editorial calendar that we built for Joomla for this purpose, where we have a calendar version of the layout of all the articles. It's a free extension, so you can download it for free and use it. If you want to have a premium version, there is one. But the free one is absolutely gorgeous in the sense of you see all your articles and you can then drag and drop them to different dates and then you change the publishing date. So we can say, okay, blog post number one, blog post number two, blog post number three. We can see then that they're coming in the right order. And you can also, when we have a, like a sending list, do you have a newsletter list or something that you send out to? Yeah. So you don't have to forget about them. That's a crucial part of content marketing, that they also get that information. In this uh, calendar, you can also see AC mailings uh, broadcast that goes out. So you can see that now I'm posting this blog post, that information going out to my list. This is the blog post, this is going out to my list. This is really good for having a good overview. Yeah. The same thing goes for social media channels. There are, I'm going to showcase some of the uh, extensions or uh, services that we use for social media in the end of the session. And then that's the same thing. You can see all the different social media that goes to, you know that this blog post is published and now you know that you're gonna have maybe five or 10 different social media posts that drives traffic to that blog post. Let's uh, take another example. Do you produce like extensions? Anyone? Yeah, two, okay. So we decided to sell one of our extensions Pix Tracker. Pix Tracker is one of our uh, extensions where you have scripts manager, like scripts like Google uh, Analytics or Facebook tracking codes, or uh, you have a Google Search Console or Google Tag Manager. All these have scripts that is tracking codes, and we have an extension where you can put everything in place and you can manage them and make sure that they are in the right place. When it comes to our avatar for this, there's a lot of marketers. They have all the scripts that they need to put on their website, but that website, uh, it maybe is managed by someone new, of you, right? Like, and I, like a Joomla developer. So they can't go in and do it by themselves. And then they, uh, they stop there and they don't use that service. Or they send it to you guys and you have to put it into a template or into a module or somewhere else. And maybe you forget about that that needs to be upgraded or updated sometimes. So the, uh, the avatar here is usually a user, not a Joomla builder. And for us then to talk about what is the problem, yeah, the problem is that you have a solution that you want to use and you have to have that script on your website. And the destination should then be to be I have the code in place so I can actually use this web service and I can track my, my statistics. And it should be easy. So how do we then talk about how that works? Uh, for this particular uh, case, we said that having kind of these kind of release notes, these release notes are more targeted towards avatars that are more developers. Here's the new features, here's the new tech stuff. So we decided not to, to have those things for that avatar. Instead, we did a lot of different blog posts for different usages. People that are marketers usually say, how to add Google Tag Manager script code to Joomla, right? Because that's their problem. And then we have a blog post that matches that. Or, I want to track my visitors into being an audience on Facebook 
how do I put that specific code on just one page? So see what I'm getting at? The, the idea is to really, really get to know who is going to buy the service or the product from you. And then schedule that one. Another thing that we talk, talk about is we do a lot of training specifically on actually getting to know your avatar. So we have workshops in our office. And we have a good landing page where we talk about what we do. And the person that comes to this is usually someone who works at an agency that really realize that this is important now when you look at navigation, when you look at the branding of the website, and they want to add this uh, competence inside their ad agency, or they are marketing people that realize that they create a lot of content, but they don't match up, they don't see the earnings, they don't see the revenue that they think that they're gonna have. So we brainstormed about how, how to use our, our content management in the right way and to get them from the current stage where they, like, they know some kind of, everybody can buy some from me that wants to have this, to be very specific. We created a workbook. So this workbook you can download for free. It's a seven step workbook, how you create a persona and avatar. Like a really, really good seven steps 360 degree of your ideal client and we thought okay how can we get this out there yeah we can talk about hey download our workbook but that's not that sexy and it's not that informational so we did a lot of blog posts again and since we have seven steps on doing the persona we had at least seven blog posts to write and we have one collective blog post saying hey this is why it's important for you we have tens of thousands of messaging going on every single day that we see, marketing-wise. How would you actually <coughs> pinpoint yourself into the algorithm of Facebook or Google that's actually relevant to your ID client? So that made sense for our avatar users to, to realize how, how to create them. From this blog post, we had tons of different social media that we can do. We took away stuff that we think thought was really valuable from the blog post and splintered it out to social media. So from the workbook, we got at least eight blog posts. From every single blog post, we got at least 10 social media. And we didn't have to recreate anything. We just had to repurpose it. <coughs> I did a Facebook Live about the avatar and talked about that for maybe 20 minutes. Facebook Live is awesome. Like if we talked video before that that actually pushes it the limits, this is astonishing. If you are not doing Facebook Live, you should. It's free. It gets people to like, know and trust you immediately. It can take you weeks, like seven different touch points to actually get know and like and trust to someone. Facebook Live, you can get that in 10 minutes. Because you are on, on screen, you are your true self, you are not edited, you're not well done in your hair, you're not in a like quiet place, you are right then and there sharing something that's really, really important for you to share to someone else because you can't help yourself. If you can get that message through in a Facebook Live style, you're going to kill it. From this, we have links to the workbook. It's downloadable all the time. That's one of our best lead sources, when we can start talking to people at the right time, in the right way. A blog post does not do that. A social media post with an image or a text link does not do that. Facebook Live does that. It's not going to be forever, but right now, Facebook is pushing live really, really hard. And that's why you see so many of them in your newsfeed. Be one of them. Take that advantage. Cool. Yeah. In addition to this, you can also um, download the video with the little tricks and put it up to your YouTube channel. Yeah, so exactly. you have dual use. Yeah. 
Because in, in Facebook, you need to have them bump your things where people have to go into your page and really find it. On YouTube, you search for it and it's there. So it's repurposing again, absolutely. And if you do the download to YouTube, you can also have it with the text so people can listen to your video without any sound. Yeah. What about uh, YouTube live videos? Oh, it's really, really good as well. Uh, right now you cannot do it from your phone if you don't have more than 10,000 yeah. likes. Yeah, like as well. Yeah, so when, so it really, really works well for those who have 10,000 yeah. likes or followers. Uh, I don't know when everybody's gonna get it. I guess, I guess 1,000 likes, or is it 10,000? 10,000. Oh, that's just So you have to, okay. have to really be yeah. good at it. And that's why it's good for you to like start yeah. repurposing your get more followers. Because if you're in <coughs> Facebook Live and YouTube Live, it's really good. Yes, you can use Periscope too from your phone. Um, you can send it through Twitter flow. Yeah. So you can get it up short and really fast. Yeah. We use something called Wirecast in our office. Wirecast is a software that you install on your web, on your desktop. And then you can say, I want this to show on Periscope, on the YouTube Live, and on Facebook Live. Awesome stuff. What about uh, Instagram stories and what about Snapchat? No, that is not compliant with that yet. Probably that would be. Everybody wants to be behind videos. It's a lot of competition going on right now. So I read that uh, what I'm going to ask is kind of internal, so if you don't want to bother. Yeah. Do you have something like a golden section on how many blog posts you do per week I get that, that you as a marketing agency have decided to post as a, every week and then how many times you, you are going to share it yeah. on Facebook and Twitter? I would say that we don't <laughs> overdo it. We do it for a purpose. So if we have a campaign where we need to, we have a goal, we have 10,000 downloads of our avatar book. Mm -hmm. Then we will start to repurposing and reusing our blog post again, because it's like evergreen, it doesn't get old. Uh, but we would not do that every single time because people get tired after a while. So, and we don't produce blog posts every week or every day. It's really for a purpose that we do it. Okay. And you do that, um, as an agency, you get to build websites, right? Yeah. So, uh, publishing a post about the new features of 3.7 yeah. is to get new customers. Yeah, exactly. Don't you ever worry that many of the Joomla users are wanting free advice? Yeah. And then when they come to you, they, get, they, they ask you for free information. Well, I don't mind sharing free information. I think that, yeah, but I don't. I don't mind because I think that people come to us when they have a problem because they know that we know our things. Mm -hmm. If they upgrade and they break because they don't know that they actually haven't been um, handling their management of their upgrades and extensions well, if that breaks, they will call us and say, hey, can you please help me? So that is actually a good resource for us. Like 80% of everybody that reads our blog posts and our Twitter posts and everything else will just join, we ask and get that information for free, never hire us. Mm -hmm. But the 20% that do hire us really are interested in putting their money on the table and saying, hey, I know that you know this, I want to have help by you. And that's, that's good enough for me. And the other people know what we do, and even if they don't want to pay for it, if someone asks them in their network of someone who knows Joomla in Sweden, they will be happy to to uh, to share our information. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, for example, if something changes, um, maybe you you have a video about uh, custom fields in 3.7, yeah. and now the way how the custom fields work will change in 3.8. Yeah. And um, do you delete those old blog no. posts? We don't. No. But you do an update about this. Yeah. Okay. We do an upgrade and we, again, content marketing is not just text. It's video, it's um, mm -hmm. uh, images and everything. What we do, is we use something called ScreenFlow. It's a okay. program where we have done bits and pieces of it. Mm -hmm. So when we want to, we can actually just go in and change this. And then we can change the first thing and the last thing okay. and everything is still the same. And that may shorten our time to deliver a video immensely. So for us, just figuring things out. Oh, this is a neat thing. This is what we can do. We go in and change this. But and you, do, you do everything a new blog post and do not 
added old ones. And no, we changes. don't add it old ones. We want to create, accumulate more things okay. so they can see that things are happening a lot in Joomla because that yeah. actually gives them a feeling that it's a good, well taken care of system that they can place their money and their time in. I have, I have also seen edits, you know, like at the end of the blog post, like a new edit and then you take them with a link to the yeah. new post. So you can you post new links to new videos saying, hey, there's a new uh -huh. update and link them to another one. Uh, so I want you to think of how can you add, if you are an agency and you're doing a lot of Joomla work when it's more technical and you have problem with getting people to get their, their content to you, figuring out how you can purpose and tell them how to create content easily. I have a lot of clients that calls, uh, no, they use their iPhone in their car. They don't call, but they have a meeting with a client and they had a conversation with them and they had a really good discussion. They take on their iPhone in the car and they create a sound file for us where they say, hey, I got this question and here's how I responded and here's what blah, 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 blah. And then we get the sound file to us and we redo that to a workbook, a checklist, a blog post. So they feel like this is what they want to share but they don't have to spend the time writing it. Figuring out how to collect information from your clients without them sitting down typing it because they should manage their business. They should do other things than actually create the content. You could do that. If you don't have someone on your team doing it, find someone that do, does this for a living and add that to your service and you're going to be more a full, a full service agency. My, my uh, last slides is about telling your story. People want to get to know you. They don't like to know your brand. Like, yeah, it's nice, I'm from Pixpro, but they really want to know me. They want to trust me. What my company name is, is not that important for them. So build your own brand at the same time you build your business brand. So I do a lot of Facebook Live. And I do that at places where I think that I can share some information that's good for my viewers. And it's not for just the content. It's for them to get to know how I am and how what my feelings are or what my interests are. Like most people know I have two kids and I have a husband who loves barbecuing. And, <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they, I bring them to conferences. Yes, because they like to hang around with me and see what I do as a living and why I'm totally in love with the Joomla community because it gives me so much energy to spend time with, with people like me. And I think that that is important to find something that you can say, hey, here's who I am. And don't think about your makeup, and especially with ladies, right? We, we fuss about our hair and we fuss about things and can we retake that picture? Facebook Live, you have no, like, you don't have a second chance, you're on, right? Yeah. And I think that's the key because people are so fed up with these special produced videos that are too cleaned and too polished. They just want to have real and authentic messaging. And uh, do, do not worry, people are far more forgiving. So I tried uh, last, no, not this Friday, okay, last Friday. Um, I tried the first time Facebook Live, um, so really minimal setup, just about uh, lifting stones with the sandbag and just rambling on about it. Also made it more difficult because I was answering in German and in English, <laughs> but it was no problem, really. Just and people like to say hi to you, they like to give you a heart if you're fine, like, they like to, like to push for you, and when they do, they pushed into all the other friends that they have, mm -hmm. so, so you get a bigger reach. So would you say also that uh, a brand is uh, evolving into a personification, yeah. uh, and, and then you create more uh, a, a more personal and, and close bonding with your audience? I would say, course? yeah, I would say that it's more important now than ever why people are doing what they are doing in their business. That the business is pretty clear on that super crystal clear so everybody knows that's that's why they do what they do like in fixed growth what we do is to grow other people's businesses that's what we that's our passion we grow other people's businesses sometimes we do it with automation sometimes we do it with like workflows that's simpler and easier like overviews that's simpler like we want it to simplify the growth that's what we do and we find different ways of doing that that's important but i have people on my staff that i want to be superstars I don't want them to have 
the Pix Pro logo on their head all the time. I want them to build their own brand because building their own brand will be building our brand. So give people the opportunity to be themselves and be themselves more and more authentic and don't try to like, oh, we have to read this before you post that blog, but we have to read that to prove that from that, that, that department. Forget it. Like people trust people. They want to do good. So we do a lot of like uh, mingling in our office where I do mini seminars. I want the people to get to know each other and network so they can grow their business with others. Uh, before I came here, I told my story about the new roll-ups that's outside the door where Kiera, who's been doing the, our branding, has been doing amazing jobs. We've done our folder that everybody has in their bag. I think it's important to tell your story. Why are you doing what you do and how you do it? And showcase that. And also, let other people tell you a story. Not just your employees. But in this sense, we have people... <laughs> We have people sharing our content, so we have some infographics that's on Pinterest and people are sharing it and sharing it and sharing it and they're sharing it over and over again if we look at it. Because they are looking good by sharing our content. So think about how can you do so much good content, but don't do the numbers of content, do good content, do awesome content that have a longer life show. So here's the things that we use. It's great leadership, right? Um, so this is what we use. We use uh, OS Map to make sure that all our blog posts and all our content is sent to Google. We use AC Mailing for our mailing, for the most part, for all our clients. And we do that by curating content and resending it to them. We use Canva, which is a free service to do really amazing videos and infographics. And we use Meet Edgar or Sendable to use for our social media. And we can then have all these blog posts that we said, we can have all the splinters of social media. We can actually put them into a category in Meet Edgar or Sendable that repurposes it. So if someone's talking about something that we have a hashtag on and that's really moving on Twitter, our content is thrown in from that system by automatically into that conversation. Figure out how to automate your social media. Don't sit and figure out, I need to do this every hour. Put that into really smart systems instead. We use Hotjar and True Conversions to see what is actually read on our web pages. True Conversion actually can record every single visit to your website. So you can see a recording, what they have been doing, how they move their mouse, or how they use their fingers on a touch pad or a phone. That will give you valuable insight on how to use your content in the best way possible. If you can have the video on top or if you have a list in, on the top. If you can have an image, move that maybe down. Depends all on how this heat maps works for you. So that's pretty smart to, to not just throw some, something out there, but actually measure and see what works and what does not work. We use our own products as well, Pix Tracker, Pix Puzzles, and Pix Cookie Restrict. In this, there is a um, URL. It's called pixper.net slash grow. If you go in there and you put your name and your email, you will be sent a coupon code so you can buy them for a better price too. And you can also play around with our claims in our folder. So this is also repurposed in our emails follow-ups. It's also repurposed on our roll-ups. So think about how can you repurpose your content better to work smarter with content marketing. That's what I have. Thank <laughs> you.